one Christmas I remember my mom giving me a, a Barbie dollhouse and the dream house. They put it together that night before, I guess, and I was pretty upset that it was already put together. I wanted to do it. And that was one of the things very early on that they had a clue of maybe she wants to do something with her hands, but then it later evolved to engineering. My father used to play games with me, mental arithmetic. I recognize now that they were algebra on his part. Of course, I didn't know they were algebra as an eight-year-old. I never really thought about being a scientist when I was growing up because I didn't know any scientists. I didn't really know that that was a pathway I could pursue. I was not someone that had a distinct thought in mind of what I want to be or what I want to do when I grow up. I knew two things really were strong interests for me. I was inspired and curious and fascinated by the grand adventure that I was seeing the early astronauts have on television. Watched everything from Alan Shepard's 15 minute flight on forward. Progressing beautifully. I believe they're setting up the flag now. And it was just a scale of drama and boldness and adventure that even the world had never seen. And you know, watching that at a young age was a great inspiration to me. But it mainly made me curious about how do people get that kind of adventure in their life. I was born in Korea in a poor environment. My mother, she raised two daughters as a single mom. She decided that we should immigrate to the United States. And then things were really tough because the language and the kids were mean back then. They were always making fun of us, my sister and I, and most of my friends dropping out of high school. And the most kids just get a job after high school. That was my goal also. I worked in the sewing factory with my mom. I was making penny for sewing one piece of clothes. I thought, wait a minute, this is not, this is not something I want to do. I can't do this. I need, I need to better myself, make a better living. So I needed to expand my knowledge, I guess, in math and, and study something on it. My counselor, of course, said, engineering is for you. I am from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Um, I attended Baltimore Public City Schools, and I also attended high school, which was an engineering-based, and we're not too open to women being at the school. The other challenges may have been financial, having to work through college and work a semester to pay for the upcoming semester, which of course delayed me graduating. And I don't know that I would have ended up at Goddard had I finished when I thought I should finish. When between fifth and sixth grade, I organized my friends into an astronomy club to study the constellations. And by seventh grade, I decided I wanted to be an astronomer and that I was going to try for it. I knew it was going to take me another 12 years of schooling, but I figured I'd try. And if I didn't make it, I probably could teach physics or math in high school. I was told from the beginning that women could not be scientists. In high school, one of the ex experiences I remember is I asked my guidance counsel for, counselor for permission to take a second year of algebra instead of a fifth year of Latin. And she looked down her nose at me and sneered, what lady would take mathematics instead of Latin? I was not encouraged as a woman. My thesis professor was one I often didn't get the support that I'd expected. There was a period in which he went for six months without speaking to me, even when I said hello to him in the hall. He was angry because I'd left the university to go to the government. My role in Hubble was as program scientist. Being the first executive woman at NASA turned out not to be terribly eventful. I, I was accepted very readily as a scientist and as in my job, the men were very cooperative. I never found that anybody ever looked at me from a gender standpoint. I was part of the group. Hey Facebook, we're live here at Goddard Space Flight Center. I'm Erin Kislick and today we're talking about Hubble's brand new frontier. It was the summer before my senior year. My internship was um, 
with human exploration and operations in their education and outreach group, and it was, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. The course of my career, it took me to Houston to work for NASA, it took me back to the DC area to work for NASA again, and I found myself at age 25 for reasons completely beyond my control, having lost three different jobs, and I thought that was it for me, to be honest, um, but I gave it one last shot and I'm, I'm here in the place I exactly wanted to be. Uh, and I was nearing the end of graduate school when NASA opened the competition for space shuttle astronauts. I never thought of my life that way. I want to be an astronaut. So when the Hubble deployment crew was being chosen, one of the key factors in the NASA leadership mind was someone with experience in every one of the crew positions. Because these guys are looking for expedition managers. They want someone who's going to be a hybrid of part of the you know, ship's company, as we would call it. You, are attached to the shuttle and you're going to host and operate scientific experiments. So it's a different model than an oceanographic research ship, but, uh, but familiar. I think there were times when I felt uh, really intimidated. Uh, I had come from a small town in rural Arkansas. When I entered the university environment, I felt intimidated a lot of times in my classes, but I learned how to seek out help. I learned how to uh, find mentors, find tutors, ask questions and not be embarrassed to do that. Advice I have for young people, especially those underprivileged because I was the one, is that don't let anything stop you. If I hadn't had some of the stumbling blocks that I had to get to where I am now, A, I wouldn't appreciate it as much as I do right now, and B, I don't know if I would have been in the right place at the right time to end up where I am now. So if there's something, this light at the end of the tunnel that's keeping you going, keep your eye on the prize. You don't want to spend your life doing something that you don't like. Stay curious, uh, learn how to learn, understand you're going to have to match your passions and your dreams with really hard work. A lot of people have already paved the way. There's still a lot of things that have to change but I think a lot of doors are open and the opportunities are vast. Um, I'm here and then there are a lot of others like me here. So if I could do it, then they can do it also.